Good day, grade nines. Welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. You are tuned into your second lesson for Term 3 EMS Financial Literacy. And in this lesson, we will be discussing source documents as well as the creditor's journal. So grab your pen and notebook and let's get busy. Right, so let's quickly recap. Can you still remember what a creditor is? A creditor is a supplier from whom a business buys items without paying immediately. The business then owes the creditor money. In the previous lesson, we mentioned the source documents for creditors. Can you still remember what it was? An invoice is correct, grade nines. Remember, the business receives the original invoice as the creditor or the supplier then keeps the duplicate invoice. So let's quickly run through an invoice together. The name and the information of the business that receives the invoice should be on the invoice, as well as the date on which the invoice is compiled. The supplier's name should also appear on the invoice, for example, Petunia Traders. The order description and quantity should also be recorded on the invoice. So good nines, that's very simple. Let's quickly run through it one more time. So grade nines, you must now remember, businesses receive various invoices from different businesses. So they must now renumber it in their own creditors journal in a specific sequence. Okay, so now we've covered the source document, which is the invoice. So now let's go and have a look at the creditors journal. Okay, so let's get the creditors journal or the CJ behind us. Okay, so I'm going to start with the heading, which is a very important part of the creditor's journal. So the following things must be in the heading. The name of the journal, in this case the CJ. The name of the business, and in this example we are going to use Ikasi Kofu Company. The month and the year, as well as the folio number. Your first journal, when starting a business, will be CJ1. The next month will then be CJ2 and so forth. Right, grade nines. So now I will go through every column specifically with you. The first column is the document number. Remember, grade nines, that we have to now renumber the invoice numbers because they came from different creditors. So the invoices are renumbered in sequence by the business before they are recorded in the creditor's journal. They are then filed according to the new numerical order. The source document is the original invoice. The second column is the day. This column is used to write the day on which the transaction took place. So the date on the invoice when items were bought on credit will be used. The third column is the creditors column. This column is used to record the name of the creditor that we bought from. Then we also have a folio column which is the folio number. It is used for cross-reference, for example, to show the number of the account in the creditor's ledger. The creditor's account number only appears after posting to the creditor's ledger. Okay, so I know you don't know what a creditor's ledger is, but don't stress, we'll cover this in the last lesson for Term 3. Right, so let's move over to the creditor's control column, which will be the total that is on the invoice. It is also important to remember that the total of this column should be equal to the sum of all the other columns' totals. The next column is the trading stock column, which is recorded separately for stock control purposes. Then we have the amount of the sundry accounts. If there is not a column provided for a certain item purchased on credit, it is then analyzed in the sundry accounts. Then we have the folio number. The last column is the details column, which has the name of the relevant general ledger account that must be entered in this column. 
Okay, grade nines, now that the theoretical part is over, let's get a bit more practical. Grade nines, so this is a typical example that you will find in the exams. Okay, so let's use our company, Ikasi Coffee Company, as the example in this transaction. On the 4th of June, Ikasi Coffee Company bought goods on credit from JJ Wholesalers for 10,800 Rand minus a 20% trade discount and received invoice 275. Grade 9, so you are supposed to be able to calculate this 20% discount. Can you still remember how to do this? Let's quickly pause the video. We'll continue in 3, 2, 1. Great nines, so you can use your calculator for these calculations. First determine what 20% is of 10,800 Rand. You are supposed to then have 2,160 Rand. And then you can deduct this from the 10,800 Rand and you will then receive 8,640 Rand, which is the new cost price. 10,800 Rand minus the 20%, which we now know is 2,160 Rand, equals 8,640 Rand, which is the new cost price. Okay, so let's go back to the journal. The document number will be 001. You must remember now we renumbered the invoices. The day is the 4th of June. The name of the creditor will be JJ Wholesalers. The creditors column will be 8,640 Rand and the same amount will be recorded in the trading stock column of Ikasi Coffee Company because they bought trading stock. Let's look at another example. Ikasi Coffee Company bought the following on credit from SN Distributors and received invoice 108. They bought equipment for 15,800 Rand and stationary for 1,840 Rand. Okay, so let's record this transaction in the creditors journal together. The invoice number will be 002. The date then obviously will be the 8th of June. Then you will record SN distributors at the creditors name. The amount that should be recorded in the creditors control column will be the 15,800 Rand, which was the equipment, plus the 1,840 Rand, which was the stationery. This then equals 17,640 Rand. The stationery will also be recorded in their own column and the equipment will be recorded in the sundry accounts. Okay, grade nines, this is our last example. Let's see if you can do this one on your own. On the 13th of June, Ikasi Kofu Company purchased packaging material on credit from Moon Traders. Ikasi Kofu received an invoice numbered 560 to the value of 2,800 Rand and they received a 5% trading discount. Grade nines, let's see if you can record this transaction in the creditors journal by yourself. You must remember now that you must first apply the discount. Right, let's first look at the calculations. The 2,800 Rand minus the 5% discount, which will be 140 Rand, equals 2,660 Rand. This 2,660 Rand will be the amount that Ikasi Kofu Company will have to pay. Let's go and see what the effect is on the journal. So first you will record the invoice number, then the date and the creditor's name. The 2,660 Rand will be recorded in the creditor's control column and also the sundry account as packaging material. Okay, good nine. So now you know how Ikasi Kofu Company purchase on credit. But at some point, they must also settle their accounts with their creditors. 
This will need to happen within a certain period, according to the terms of their agreement. All payments made to creditors will be recorded in the cash payments journal. Ikasi Kofu Company will then do a cash payment via EFT or rather electronic funds transfer. With the introduction of creditors, a new column will be added to the CPJ. This is called the creditors control column. Okay, grade nines, let's look at one example. On the 15th of June, Ikasi Kofu Company paid Africa suppliers 22,800 Rand with an EFT. The number of the EFT was 050 as a partial payment of their account. So first, let's record the document. This document number in the CPJ will be 050. The date is the 15th of June and Africa suppliers will be listed under the details of this transaction. This transaction will then be recorded in the bank column and in the new column, remember the creditors control column, as it shows that Ikasi Kofu Company has paid their creditors. And that's the end of this lesson, grade nines. I hope you understand the creditors source document as well as the creditors journals a bit more. Next time we will be exploring the general ledger. See you soon!